Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So over the course of the last couple of years I felt more and more inspired by vintage sewing patterns, uh, mainly the American 1940s and 1950s. It's just something about the style lines and the general feel of it, especially the skirts, medium, flared. Um, I just love this. So I thought I could incorporate some of this inspiration into my summer wardrobe. Um, and full disclaimer here, I am not going to reproduce any vintage sewing pattern. I don't own a single vintage sewing pattern. Um, I will use my modern sewing blocks and my modern sewing techniques like my serger. Um, and um, if you're interested in the real stuff, you know, these patterns are still around, um, I suggest you check out Stephanie Canada and her website backroomfinds.com where you can actually buy these original patterns. Maybe this is more your jam. Um, if you're interested in what I do with my modern techniques, then you're welcome to stick around. And I will take you back in time and show you how I made this dress right now. The pattern is available on my website for free. Just follow the link below the video or go to dressdeveloper.de Patterns. There you have a dress hyacinth. And here you can choose the skirt type, uh, either the version with the bias inset in front or a panel skirt version. The back is always a panel skirt. So then you can select your size or upload your measure set with your very own measurements. Then you can select a sleeve length, full length, three quarter or short. And I add a skirt length. And here, this is actually new, you can select the fit category and the fit category determines the amount of ease you have in your pattern. Now what's left is the seam allowance and the paper format A4 is fine for now. Then I can create a pattern. Here you have two links. Let me show you the bottom one first. Here you have an actually cover and some additional information about your measurements and the ease and the pattern pieces. And here you have a preview of a printing layout so you know how you need to assemble all the pattern pieces. And then I need to create this again. There you have the pattern itself, all ready for printing. I begin with cutting out all my pattern pieces. I think I used about 3 meters of this lovely printed cotton by Gütermann. That's very lovely stuff, great to work with. And I make sure to mark all notches and darts. I use some pins to transfer the marking of the dart points to the back of the fabric. I also cut some fusible interfacing for the front and the back neck facing. I trim these pieces all around so I don't end up with glue sticking on my ironing board. A 
And then of course I ironed these on. Please enjoy this footage of my highly aesthetic ironing board. Next step, darts. I sew all the darts in the same way. I begin at the outside, backstitch, and then I keep going until I reach the outside of the fabric again. I leave a long tail and then I tie a knot. Back to the ironing board and my tail sam, where I press the darts into a slightly more organic shape. Next I assemble the skirt pieces. I don't have any footage for the back skirt pieces, but they are pretty straightforward. So this is the front skirt. I have the center piece and the two inset pieces. And I line up the notches and evenly distribute the fabric between the curves. And then I can stitch these together. Now the back skirt pieces got searched first and then sewn together so that I could press open the seam allowance. For the front skirt I decided to stitch everything together with the serger directly and then later to top stitch the seam. This gives a very narrow seam and um, this does accommodate for the curve better. Are there better options? Maybe. This is just what I did. And as said, here I'm top stitching. This is one of my favorite pressure feet. Um, it has a little guide in the center and this is very very helpful when top stitching along an edge. Now to the tricky part of this pattern, the collar. I have already joined the collar pieces in the middle and now I pin the front piece to the back piece, first in the center. The center of the collar goes to the center of the back neck hole. And then I try to join up everything, uh, beginning with the shoulders and then the curve and then the tricky point, the little edge at the end of the shoulder. At this point I actually need to snip into the seam allowance so I can manipulate the fabric around this little corner. I don't have a feeling this is explained very well by me. So you line up the shoulders and the neck hole and then you need to snip in the corner of the front piece to be able to join the rest of the color to the neckline. This is so hard to explain. <laughs> Maybe uh, I hope you can see what I'm doing. Actually you can't. Great camera work here. Gosh, this camera work. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, maybe this angle is a teeny tiny bit better. Do you see the slit there in the corner? Okay, at least I show you the result of my pinning action. Here you can at least see how the slit joins on to the upper shoulder point. And now I'm going to stitch all around this. Mm -hmm. 
At the corner I go very slow and try to maneuver all the fabric out of the way so I don't install any puckers. But I don't uh, want to end up with a hole so I need to make sure that I catch at least a teeny tiny bit of fabric from the front. And once again on the other side. And then I need to repeat this process with the facing pieces. Then the facing can be sewn onto the front piece, right sides facing. Then I search the outer edge of a facing piece. Could have done this before I sewed it on. Um, but then I cut back the seam allowance in the inside and back again to the ironing board and turn and press everything to the inside. Careful, hot! Then I hand stitch the facing down. I try to only catch one or two threads from the outer fabric, so the stitching is almost invisible from the outside. The borders lay still flat at this point, so I think it's the perfect time to do the buttonholes. Let me walk you through the sleeves. The bodice lays still flat and here's the arm side. We have a double notch in the back and with a single notch in the front. And we have exactly these notches on the sleeve head and an additional notch for the shoulder seam, which I join up now. So basically I join up all the notches and the start and the end of the sleeve and then I distribute everything in between evenly. Remember that you don't want to line up the seam allowance, you want to line up the stitching line. And in my case, this is 1.5 centimeters to the inside. I like to shake the fabric a little bit so everything can fall in place. The sleeves get sewn on with a sewing machine first. This way it's much easier to control the fabric as if I was working directly with a serger. You can see how I stop often and keep repositioning everything. And I keep checking that the fabric lays flat. Sometimes even a teeny tiny little bit of maneuver is enough to remove any puckers.
When the sleeves are in place, I take the bodice over to the serger and sew the sleeve seam again, cutting back the seam allowance. Now I can sew on the front and back skirt to the bodice. The side seam is still open at this point, uh, so this will actually be our next step. The seams between the panels of the back skirt line up with the darts. After the skirt pieces are sewn on, I can finally pin together the side seams. But I need to leave some gaps in this, because I want to install my pockets and a side zipper. So the blue pin marks the waist, so this is where the center of the side zip should hit. I mark the position for the opening with some orange clips. Keep in mind that you cannot sew all the way down for an invisible zipper, so the opening will be a bit shorter than that. This part of the seam will be sewn with a basting stitch. Now onto the pockets. You see the pockets are already searched and sewn together all around except for the opening. Also the stitching doesn't go across the seam allowance. About 3 or 4 cm below the zipper, I mark the opening of a pocket. This part of the seam will stay unstitched. Alright, let's sew the seam. I begin on top at the sleeves and then I sew all the way down until I meet the first orange clip. There I backstitch and then I switch to the longest stitch my machine has to offer and baste the next section. At the end I backstitch again and then I switch back to my regular length. And I sew until I hit the next orange clip and here I leave an opening for the pocket. Here I start again with a back stitch and now I can stitch all the way down to the skirt. So here are the orange clips again. I press the seam allowance open with my fingers and uh, here is the basset section. I need to pin the zipper in place at the center, right on top of the seam allowance. These little clips are very helpful for this step. Um, you can do it with pins of course, but I think it's a bit easier with the clips. You only want to pin the zipper to the seam allowance, not to the fabric underneath. The zipper is then basted into place, which means it is sewn to the seam allowance and the seam allowance only. I use my regular zipper foot for this and I'm sewing right along the edge of the seam allowance. I just want to fix the zipper in place for this. Then that is done, 
I need to remove all the basting stitches in the side seam. Now we have a functioning zipper, but it does look pretty ugly, right? So we need to do something against this. And this means we will sew the zipper again, this time closer to the zipper teeth. And I'm using my special invisible zipper foot for this. You can absolutely do this with your regular zipper foot. Um, it's just a bit easier with this thing. Check out my video about zipper installation for detailed instructions. And here we have our finished zipper. Almost invisible, right? When you've come so far, the pockets will be a piece of cake. Remember we left an opening for them, so uh, now we are just going to pin the pockets seam allowance to seam allowance over this opening. And this is why we don't stitch the seam allowance of the pockets, so we can open this. And then we sew the seam allowance of the pockets to the seam allowance of the dress. And the zipper is just folded up. You see, it's no problem. Not much left to do now. The hem of the sleeves gets folded under twice and then stitched down. Then I install the buttons and call it a night. I mean, literally. Since the skirt is partially cut on the bias, I need to let it hang overnight, because it might stretch out of shape. Luckily, nothing did stretch. So the first thing the next day, I am going to hem the skirt, and I'm using a strip of bias tape for this. Yes, it does not color match perfectly, but I don't care. It gets the job done. Then the bias tape is pressed to the inside and stitched in place. And with that, my dress is done. So, here is the finished dress. Inspired by the late 1940s. What do you think? Does it feel and read vintage to you? I think I will do some minor changes to the pattern before it goes live. Um, mainly a bit tweaking of the angles and um, yes, I think the neckline is a little bit too wide and uh, it could be a bit lower. But overall I quite like this dress. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe we see each other again in the next one. When you sew something from my sewing patterns, then Make sure to tag me on Instagram, I would love to see that. Until we meet again, bye for now!